I'm Bishop Louis Payne. I'm the pastor of the Word for the World Community Church in Stewartstown, Pennsylvania. And I will be speaking today about Richard Allen. Um, Bishop uh, Richard Allen is a very interesting character. Uh, he was born in slavery in Philadelphia back in 1760. And uh, he uh, gradually uh, bought his uh, independence, uh, bought his way out of slavery through a process called gradual manumission. Uh, that means that slaves were allowed to gradually uh, do work in order to raise the money to pay for their uh, emancipation. And uh, after being born in slavery, he paid $2,000 in order to get his freedom. And uh, afterward, uh, he was, uh, before that, he was sold from his uh, slave owners in Philadelphia and uh, went to uh, Kent County, Delaware. Right, that was a lot of money uh, in, uh, in, in that, for that time. Uh, but uh, he was uh, determined to buy his uh, uh, freedom and uh, he longed to be free and uh, he accomplished it. Uh, Richard Allen was a, a tremendous character. Uh, his major contributions were, well, of course, he was the founder of the AME Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which is the first black denomination in the country. And uh, not only that, but he was also uh, a, uh, an entrepreneur. Uh, he had businesses in Philadelphia. Uh, he had a, a shoemaking business. Uh, he uh, had a chimney sweep business. He had a, a blacksmith business as well. And uh, when he died, he left an estate of $80,000, which was really quite uh, an amount uh, back at the time in which he lived. Well, we don't know very much uh, about his education, but we do know that he was uh, a man who uh, valued education very highly. And I think he was, uh, inspirational in helping people to get an, an education uh, by his example and because of the things he was able to accomplish. Uh, another one of the great preachers of the AME Church was a man by the name of Charles Tenley. And Charles Tenley uh, had a large congregation. Uh, his auditorium, if memory serves me correctly, seated about 15 hundred people and it was usually packed two or three times on a Sunday. Uh, he became a famous hymn writer. The, the hymn, Nothing Between My yeah. Soul and My Savior, yeah. is one of uh, Tenley's uh, hymns. He uh, was born also in slavery. I think uh, Richard Allen was a, a great uh, example, a uh, role model to many of the preachers who came uh, behind him. And so, uh, yeah, uh, he, he was a, a, a really blessed man of God and accomplished much. Well, his challenge was, uh, one of the major challenges was that uh, when he lived, Methodist preachers uh, of African descent were only ministering to African people. Uh, primarily. And there was a large church in uh, Philadelphia called St. George's. And Allen uh, attended, he was first asked to come there to preach to the black people who attended there. Uh, after he became a part of that church, there was a dramatic increase of black people who began to attend St. George's. Uh, back at, at, in those days, uh, the, uh, of course, you had to have some segregation. So 
the, the, the whites usually sat in the main auditorium and the blacks were relegated to seating in the balcony. And uh, uh, that wasn't so at first though. And, and what happened was Allen came in with Absalom Jones and a few others and they tried to kneel and pray downstairs before they went up in the balcony. And uh, they were told, no, uh, you have to go up upstairs. He said, well, we're just kneeling to pray. And after we pray, we'll go up to the balcony. They said, no, you're not allowed. And they were literally pulled off their knees and made to go upstairs. And uh, as a result of that, uh, they, they began to feel, well, this is a place where we are not respected and where we are not wa welcomed. And so that initiated the, the uh, departure from the regular Methodist church. They built, some 12 years later, they had built their own structure. and. Uh, uh, Bethel African Church and becoming, because the majority of them were Methodists, it became Bethel AME Church. And you hear a lot of AME uh, churches today are called Bethel. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, <clears throat> and so Richard Allen uh, had to overcome these racial obstacles. Uh, and many black people uh, from uh, around Philadelphia and beyond began to come to Bethel, uh, at which the uh, AMEs affectionately uh, refer to today as Mother Bethel. Well, uh, I think that <clears throat> uh, he, he um, started a path to help black people to understand uh, the dignity and self-worth and how that they could not only become educated, but also could become entrepreneurs. You know, uh, think that way back in those days, for a black man to be con considered owning a business and being blessed to thrive in that business. But when I think about Richard Allen's story, I, uh, the thing that I think uh, is, is, that sticks out to me was he was a black man in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the very name means the city of brotherly love. And here he was in all this racial conflict in the city of brotherly love. The other irony is not only is it the city of brotherly love, but that's the very city in which the United States Constitution was ratified. One of the uh, bishops of the AME Church was a bishop named Daniel Alexander Payne. And Daniel Alexander Payne was from Charleston, South Carolina. Um, for years I heard about Daniel Alexander Payne and had read about him in church history without ever knowing that he was a relative of mine. My grandmother, my paternal grandmother uh, one day uh, I was visiting her and I said to her, I said, Mom, I said, you're already talking about this Bishop Payne, Bishop Payne. He said, I said, who, who are you talking about? And she said, well, well, wait a minute, I've kept a scrapbook over the years. And she brought it out and she opened it up, I almost fell out of the, my chair. I said, Bishop Daniel Payne? She said, yes. I said, he's our predecessor? He, she said, yes. And so I had no idea um, that uh, Bishop Payne who wrote the definitive history of the AME Church, uh, who um, uh, attended the Lutheran Theological Sem Seminary in Gettysburg. I had no idea that I had any relation uh, at all to him. And uh, my, my father's people were all Methodists. As a matter of fact, my paternal great-grandfather's name was John Wesley High. And, uh, uh, and just about all of his, uh, all of my uh, dad's people, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother, their siblings, they were all Methodists. I, uh, uh, I, I do know that uh, I'm related to Daniel Payne. Daniel Payne was also uh, noted because he uh, ed believed in the education of black children. And he believed that uh, black children should be, know reading, writing, arithmetic, science, 
he had a broad scope of interest for them. And of course, he was condemned for teaching black children to read and teaching them uh, these various subjects. But uh, I think that the AME has a, uh, a great history of uh, helping to lift people in the black community to understanding uh, who they are and what they can accomplish.